This year, Jace is introducing a brand new vehicle to the All for Adventure fleet. This American-built truck has just landed in the country and Jace is keen to pick it up from the dealership and start this epic transformation. From stock standard import to a tough touring rig fit to tackle Australia's toughest terrain. Yeah, this looks like the place. Oh yeah, look at that. I reckon that's it right there. Have a look in there. What does that look like? Have a look at this absolute weapon. Now, some of you that have been watching on social media, you would have seen me standing beside one at the Brisbane 4x4 show, and you'd be sitting there going, what's going on here? Well, you were right if you said Jace was gonna hook into one of these American trucks. All right, let's get a good look at this truck while it's in stock form, sitting right here on the showroom floor. Now, the thing I notice the most about it it comes standard with a two inch lift. So it rolls off the factory floor with a two inch lift already. Now it's got some absolutely kick-ass suspension under it, stock as a rock. And it's renowned for that. This new ZR2, okay, has got performance tuned suspension, which they took from the racing industry, okay, from racing these trucks over in the States, Baja, all that, and they placed it into an on-road on street legal vehicle. Now the thing I like about it is this huge 6.2 litre V8 engine LS3. Mate, this thing's gonna have some serious boogie. Now you'll notice the colour, and it, I seem to be running into this colour a little bit. I've had this colour before, but I'm going to be playing around with colours. I'm going to be playing around with aftermarket accessories. I've got all the gear lined up to chuck on this thing, and we're going to build it into possibly one of Australia's best Chevy off-road touring weapons. The other thing too, it's got an Allison, okay, 10-speed transmission. So a bulletproof transmission attached to over 400 horsepower LS3. All I need now is to get the bloody keys. Wonder where the keys are. Hey, Jay, how you doing? Oh, you look like the guy with the keys. Finally, <laughs> how you going, mate? Here to pick up the big box. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mate, I've seen it parked here. I'm assuming this is mine. This is all yours, mate. Yeah, I thought it was. There's the keys. Go awesome. And have plenty of adventures and lots of fun. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Have a look inside this beast. This thing is absolutely mental. <laughs> Mate, I'm excited, I'll tell you now. I'm just gonna press the, the button here. <laughs> Look at that. This thing is nuts. Mate, 6.2 litre, just over 400 horsepower. Stock as a rock, mind you of American V8 muscle. I cannot even tell that this car was once a left-hand drive. And that's when you know the conversion has been done to an absolute precision level. It's got like full adjustment here in the steering wheel, I bet you, because I like, I like lots of steering wheel action. There we go, look at that. Oh, it's got paddle shift. Yes. How's that? Plus, minus. Paddle shift, that's for racing by the way. If we're gonna do some racing with the V8. Mate, what an absolute weapon of a truck. All right, I cannot wait to get my hands on the gear that's gotta go into this thing. So all the gear, ready to rock and roll. Everything from roof rack, bull bar, snorkel, canopies, uh, we're putting tires, rims, suspension, sides, you name it. We're gonna be chucking some stuff on this gear and we're gonna convert it into, well not really convert it, but we're gonna transform it into one of the sickest touring trucks that you're ever gonna see. It's gonna be insane. Cannot wait. Cannot wait. Jamie, how you going, mate? Yeah, good, mate. How are you? What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> Looks sweet, eh? Looks sweet. Yeah, it's the new flash ride, this one. Yeah, no. That's... Oh, this is their new, new truck. Yeah, the ZR. ZR2. Yeah, ZR2, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, it should be good. They're a bit of a wicked machine. Yeah, so we've got to run those twin snorkels. That's what I was thinking. 
Mate, you read my mind. <laughs> so, so basically, because this car is so new, you're gonna have to, what? What are you gonna have to uh, do, pull the uh, bump? I've got a guy coming tomorrow to do a yeah, full, yeah. full scan. So yeah, gotcha. He'll scan the whole car, yep. all, we'll rip the bumper off, do the full scan on what we gotta do to clear yeah. clear with all our bull bar, et cetera. Yeah. And then we'll get him to do the underbonnet as well so we can see what clearances we got for the snorkel. Yeah, and, gotcha. Um, and work it from there, mate. So you're thinking some twin pipes coming down, yeah, dropping twin, in the side? Yeah, twins coming down. We'll have to probably get rid of that ZR2 badge, which might be a little bit of a That's all right. pain for you, but um, no, no. that might be the only thing that we'll have to change. Bumper on the front, you reckon there'll be enough room for uh, that little uh, trick that I want to do? Yeah, for sure, mate. Yeah? Yep. I reckon <laughs> we'll try and, try and mix that in there for you. So yeah, hopefully that'll all work out well. Oh, that's gold, mate. Mate, it's hustle and bustle around here. Uh, it's busy as, yeah, mate. Yeah, stuff yeah, going on everywhere. Plenty going on. Plenty yeah, no, going that's on. awesome. Um, next step, while you're building the uh, bull bar and the snorkels, yep. I'm going to take it off and we'll go and get the uh, canopy set. Yeah, yeah, no, that, that'll work out well, mate. Yeah, uh, we'll do a, try and do a pre-fit on an existing bar to see what our parameters yep. are, and, and then we should be able to go for next. No dramas. Well, mate, you did a really good job on my last truck, which was my F250. Yep. So I can't, I can't wait to see what you guys come up with on this one. Yeah, no, looking forward to it, mate. Yeah, new. that's awesome. All right, I'll leave you with it. No worries. And uh, I'll come back in a couple of days and grab it, and then we'll keep the build going. Sounds good, mate. Mate, that's awesome. So the team gets to work. With the help of this 3D scanner, a super accurate 3D model is created to ensure the perfect fit for this custom bar. In order to help the scanner read every little contour, all high gloss and shiny surfaces need to be dulled down using this white spray. Yeah, so this is my uh, Faro laser scanning arm. It's got a laser scanner attached to the handle here. And we've got a ball probe here. And I use this for two reasons. I use it to capture holes like this. I put it in there and I touch it four or five times inside the hole and it makes a perfect circle out of that. I also use it for um, when I move the arm. So what I've done is I've hot glued these targets onto the car. I put the ball probe in there, I touch the button and I record where that position is. And I do that to several targets like this. And then when I've finished in this area here, I move the arm over here and I touch those points again. And then I'm back in the same coordinate system and I can move around the car like that. So this is the section that I've scanned so far of the car. You can see it's very detailed. So once I've scanned the whole front of this vehicle, uh, I'm gonna export that as an STL file, which will be imported into the CAD software that they use here. And that will be used to design a new bull bar. Yeah, so this is Chris Jace. He's a, oh, yeah. He designs and does all our, our go, parts on the computer. That's the go. So yeah, he's got that scan up on the computer there now and we just started to uh, sit the bar on there and see where all our parameters are so we can see how the winches are going to mount to see how the, how the mounts are going to go. So a yeah. little bit of change that we've got to do on that front end because the, the Chev chassis is slightly different. So we've just sort of getting all the measurements that we need for your clearances and then um have they changed it with the zr2 yeah a little bit different the, like the 25 and the 15 is very similar in the actual body size but the actual chassis is just slightly different so yeah, gotcha. being able to adapt what we've already got but just we'll make the changes to suit so that's the beauty of cad mate mm. we can do what we need to do so We've been able to utilise the centre uh, piece out of the F250 bar as well. Yeah, So gotcha. that's made a lot of work that we don't need to go back over. So that's been a real godsend for us. Yeah, no, that's sort of awesome. Start, start the work from that. Mounts and winch bracket has to change, but we should be able to get some good um, some good info from what the scan gave us to keep things no moving. Drama. So you've got this is your uh, this is your uh, light. Yeah, that's the light bracket light there. Bracket. So you've got. Heaps of space up underneath so we can get into the bolts and stuff, like slice it all out. Yeah, so we're gonna go through that, sort that, if you flip that back around, Chris. So there's a bit of a 
section in here, we've got a, we've got a model, a, a small bracket. Chris has been working on that this morning yeah. to actually get that to infill that and make it look quite good once it's all finished. And snorkel's all good? Snorkel's are fine. We've got all the in, inside of the guard um, where you can see where all the access is. So Jaden's been working on that, all the materials here. So as soon as we get it back from your canopy going on, we'll, we'll drop that in, back into the workshop and get those snorkels sorted. Um, Okay. Pretty good access in there, so we'll be fine. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I'll get around to uh, Norweld and get those guys cracking on a on the canopy. Yep. Sounds good, mate. No dramas. Well, Looks good. Thanks. I like it. Thanks, mate. Nice. Norweld. So this will be the first time that this truck is going to start getting stuff fitted to it. I'm gonna take some uh, tray off the back, the tub off the back, and whack a, a whole full-size deluxe can canopy on the back. I can't wait to see how um, how big this canopy is because I've got no idea what the dimensions are, nothing. The fact that this is a full-size 1500 dual cab American truck, the canopy is gonna be absolutely huge. Come and have a look at this thing. It'll be the bright blue one for sure. Yeah, definitely gonna be that one. I think it matches. Look at that. Wow. Oh, that's nuts. I like that. <laughs> Here we go. The big reveal. Dun, dun. Holy crap. That's massive. It's a big old canopy. That is yeah. huge. Maybe a lot of stuff to put in it. Oh yeah, apparently I'll be sleeping in by the looks of that. Yeah. I'll be able to put bunks in. Mate, that is nuts. It's gonna be a cool looking truck, I can't yeah. wait. The team at Norweld get to work. Due to the extremely tight turnaround time with this build, they have to work in stages. Stage one is fitting the tray. Then Jace takes the Chevy across to Outback Armour for some serious suspension work before returning it to Norwell to finish the canopy. Outback Armour have got it, putting the suspension on, which I'm keen to see how that's going. Because I've got to get it off the hoist here and from here we've got to get it over, back over and get the canopy on and then I've got to get it to my place on the weekend so that I can do some work myself. Rooftop tent, awnings, I've got to get some campos gear on it. So let's have a look at the progress. It won't be done, but I reckon it'll be getting close. So let's see how they go. All right, let's have a quick look. At, oh, I haven't actually seen it with the um, with the tray on yet. Ooh, it's starting to take shape. Well, the engineers have had an awesome time working on this one. Have they? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Okay. One of those engineers is Simon. He brings Jay's up to speed with where things are at. Yep. Um, and depending on the measurements, modify the weight pack that's going to go into it. Yep, gotcha. Um, just to achieve the right you know, load capacity. Yeah, right, load capacity for it. Yeah, gotcha. All right, so it's all happening. All right, a couple more finishing touches. Rear springs will be on and we'll get the hell out of here. It's be all right, well, I'll... Um, I'll start organising the canopy. It's got to go on next, and that'll start to weight it down, and hopefully we've got enough, um, we'll get that rear suspension perfect. Well, they're working hard on it. It'll be done very soon. Can't wait to see it. It's going to be a beast. No dramas. All right, well, I'll keep going. Thank you. OK, suspension is sorted. Now, back at Norweld, it's time to fit the canopy. Wow, let's get a look inside. Man, that looks really good. That looks sweet. Look at that colour. I know, it's so nice. And I'm going to wrap it. <laughs> Always. Let's have a look inside. So it's got a full tray on it as well. Yep, yep, full tray. Um, so you can take the canopy off yep. if you need to. Still chuck whatever you want on the tray. Um, then chuck the canopy back on when you're touring. Perfect. Not that I'll do that, but no, you can no. if you yeah. wanted to. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, nice. look at that. Nice that is awesome. Here. Yes. No, that's a good setup. I like that. Definitely. You can still keep this one locked as well, so it's got an extra 
Um, it's almost like a gun safe, isn't it? Correct, yeah, so it's 1,200 mils, so um, we'll There you most. go, yeah. yeah. So yeah. like a gun safe where you've got, not only lock the canopy, you can lock the, the lock gun safe piece. drawer. Correct. No, yeah. that's awesome, I yeah. like it. Excellent. No, that's yeah. excellent. Well, we've got a lot of work to do now because I've got to get this. this... Canvas, so. Yes. <laughs> no, this is awesome. Thank you for getting that done so quick. No cause worries. Our pleasure as always. We're Jess. always on a tight <laughs> deadline. It's like out of control this year. Yeah. But yeah, no, that's cool. No, that's awesome. I, I can't wait to get it home and start, you know, putting the little finishing touches yeah. on it. I was going to say, what's next? Yeah, well, what's you've got the new Rogue system in here as well. Red Vision Rogue. Yeah. Yeah. How cool is that? 30, yes. Yeah. Coupled with the 1250. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, that's all. The BC twelve fifty. No, that's awesome. So basically, when I start the car, I'm going to be able to get eighty amps of charging because the twelve fifty couples with the th manager yep. thirty, so that's yep. fifty and eighty. Yeah, it'll charge like there's no tomorrow. So four hundred amp hours of lithium. Four hundred amp of lithium. Red arc lithium. Yeah. Two thousand watt red arc uh, invert. Yeah, it's got all the fruit. The, the most no, independent that's awesome. setup you can get, really. Yeah, yeah, perfect. All right, so there we go, guys. I'm going to grab this now, and I'm going to head home. And the weekend, I'm going to put the finishing touches on it myself. Okay, Stewie and the and a, and a couple of other crew helping me. We're going to put it all together. It'll come together with those little finishing touches that I want to put into it, and then it'll be off from there to McCormack's and let the games begin. There is so much stuff got to go on. All right, let's go. Thank you. No worries. Awesome. I'm out of here. Sweet. There we go. Roof rack time. So first thing we've got to do when we get, um, now that I've got it at home, is I'm going to mount up the roof rack. Um, we'll put the backbone on, which has already been uh, color coded. Backbone, lighting, uh, won't put any accessories on it just yet. And then we've got to start working on the canopy as well. So we've got a few days ahead of us and start smashing out this little sucker to make it, put all those little finishing touches on it, like I keep saying tweak it the way I like to tweak it. All right, so roof rack, that's the first thing. Instruction manual, or destruction manual. That's easy, that's easy, that's easy. That bit's easy. This is the part. These are the backbones that are gonna go on. Well, they come up good. So McCormack's already color coded those for me. That's the color of the wrap I'm gonna go with. Metallic deep blue thing. Anyway, whatever the swatch says. First thing I gotta do is whip this thing, flick this thing up. And then I gotta drill holes and put nut certs into this sucker. 170 from there to there. Now, I'm only going to penetrate three millimetres. That'll be interesting. Drilling into a very expensive car. <laughs> you notice I'm drilling very slowly because I do not want to stuff this up. So now I've got to nutsert the little sucker. Hopefully my nuts are going to do the job. That's it. So if you can see that there, that's what squashes up. When you pull on it, you're doing these ones, that squashes that bit up. So. It's like flares out like a pop rivet. It's almost like, it's the same principle. Oh yeah. All right, now I can bolt that down. You beauty. There we go. Now what I did do is I cut, see the little strip in here? I did trim all the little bits off that strip I took out and placed it in here, here like that. Just cut it into sections, fits back in perfectly. All right, well, I'm done. I'm done for the, for the Arvo, or it's friggin' dark already. I'm gonna crack a beer. I'm gonna crack a beer, cause I reckon it's beer o'clock. And uh, tomorrow's another day. Got a few crew coming tomorrow. Stewie's gonna be helping out, Mitch. And, um, 
See if he can get this sucker what I want to get done in the next couple of days. All right, so this morning, before anyone else gets here, I thought I'd crack on early. I've got to get awnings on this side. I've got to get a, a Campos 270 with RTT access on this side. And then on the other side, I've got to get a Rhino Rack uh, Sunseeker. But I've also got to mount the rooftop tent, the Campos rooftop tent as well. So that's the priority this morning on the canopy. Stewie will be around shortly. We'll do some carpet and um, then we'll start wiring up the rack and then get that on with spotlights and stuff like that. So it's not too, we, we've got a busy day ahead of us and a lot of, lot of stuff to put on. Before we do anything, I've got to get this uh, rooftop tent set up. There's a few little bits and pieces. I've got to put uh, roof racks on it. Got to put the uh, brackets on the side. Set up all the little bits that um, bring it all together when you're uh, installing one of these. So it's not just a matter of bolted on. We've got to put it together first. I've got to put the roof rack. Here he is. Hey, mate. I just didn't think you'd turn up to at least 12 o'clock. <laughs> very, very lucky getting me on a Saturday morning, mate. Hey, mate. That's for sure. That's the go. Yeah, well, you coming to give us a hand, eh? Yeah, we're into it. Oh, we're into it, all right. Fella as well. He, he knows what he's doing. All right, I'll well, as they say, you, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Bodie's son Griffin puts these racks together like a pro. Oh, Mitchie's here. <laughs> there you go, mate. What's going on? Many hands make light work, but safety first. You gotta wear your safety boots in the shed, mate. <laughs> Next up is the Boss Shadow XL by Camp Boss. This lightweight but sturdy awning is easy to set up and allows access to the roof of your car if needed. Oh yeah, that's good. Up I go into my rooftop tent. Perfect. That's where we want it. So, all right, let's get some trestles. We'll put it on the bench here. So we're just going to bolt up the Sunseeker now. So the Rhino Rack 2.5 Sunseeker is going to come out and we're going to bolt it straight to the rooftop tent. So there's some channels on that edge there where we can bolt it up. Jeez, it's got some torque, that thing. So just lift it up first. Yeah, that's good. Not bad. All right, let's set her up. Perfect. Look at that. Just Got a second. TV. TV. This one. Oh yeah, TV you go in here, mate. Look at this. Yeah, that's me TV. <laughs> you wanna go and get the remote control? Press the OK button wheel on your remote. Ooh, English. Oh, how good's that? So before we put the roof rack up, we've got to mount all the lights, side lights, front lights, so two, two spotlights using all these brackets, and then run all the wires, run these wires down one side, that one cuts across to the far corner, side lights run into the canopy, um, and the front lights run down the back and all the way along the chassis back up into, into the cab, so they get separated. 40, 40, what have I put together? 35 and 35? 35, 35, yeah. Oh, because that's your distance. Yeah, that's your distance, see? Eh? Whack those in, you want the little tool for it? Use that. Where does that sit there? Does that work for you? Yeah, that works that's good, eh? Right that's magical. And then the other 41 will sit up on the front of the rooftop tent. How cool is that? 
going to be the most technically advanced. It's technically advanced ZR2 Chevy in Australia. It's going to have so much fruit on it, this thing. Alright, so we've got the two lights at the back that have just fitted into place. We're going to start running this wiring from the front lights back down inside the rhino rack and mount them all up together at the back there. Have them all wired together so they come down nicely. So we'll do that now and we'll chuck this up. Hey, hey I want to be a rock star. Oh yeah, I'm going to make this thing rumble. Look at that, two twin speakers. Two, five, that's a thousand watts. I'm gonna need a power station to run it. Now, just doing this for a test. This is not my wiring job. All I'm doing is just a quick test. Fire it up, link them together. See how they sound, see how the, um, the LEDs go and all that sort of lighting jazz because this place is gonna light up like a, a disco. Here we go. Let's go, power, lights, action. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's pumping. That's pumping. I haven't even put a sub in yet. I don't think you need it. <laughs> yeah, I reckon? Nah. I need more lights. I think I need more lights in this canopy. So roof rack's going on tomorrow. We're going to whack some more um, bits and pieces in here. I've got to paint that solar panel at some stage. Stewie's done an awesome job on the carpet. And uh, Mitch has done a good job on, on the roof rack here. Very cool. So I think it's time to sort of slow the hell down, mate. I'm sweating like a mongrel dog. Those two speakers just done my head in then, trying to get them up in there, but I got them. Got them done and I eco-cast them and they're ready to go. Slide back. Hold there. Yeah? Yeah. Well, that wasn't too painful. It's actually quite a light rack, even with the lights on it. That's the beauty of it. Very lightweight rack, but strong as hell. Man, there's some lights going on. Like, it's a tall car too. I like it, some good lighting. Okay, so. To make this Chevy, okay, this truck, what I was talking about before, making it high tech, this is what's gonna make it high tech. Now, I guess you're wondering what the hell this is. Mitch is probably wondering what the hell this is. It's a flat plate. No, it's not dinner plate. It's not, for, it's not a breadboard, it's not for cooking, and it's not for solar generating. This thing here is gonna give this truck high speed satellite internet access and mobile coverage. Right, so that's the, that's the router. I've mounted it from the ceiling, got a special bracket that hangs from the ceiling. So the router, that'll send the signal all around the vehicle and basically you just hook into it like a Wi-Fi. It's that simple. Cable's all hooked up there. That's my bulkhead fitting, clips into there. That's good. And then goes through out to the, the dish. The Chevy build is coming together. After a weekend of hard yakka with the crew putting on all the bells and whistles, it's back to AMVE for the custom bull bar fitting. Look at that. That's a big, big bit of gear. Hey mate, how's it going? Good. Looking flash. Yeah. They light, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, yeah cool. that's the beauty of them. Once you get the steel, you've got bringing the winch mount up now. Yeah. You've just got to tack the steel mounts up. Yeah, gotcha. Get a bit more weight to them, but it's still light, aren't they? Yeah, light. Considering what we're putting in it. Yeah. You've got to put the cradle on the front there, which is all made of steel. That bolts on. That's what holds all the winches and then the bar gets bolted to that. This is a custom bull bar for this brand new Chevy. The team at AMVE are working meticulously to ensure that it will fit the truck's contours 100%. 
Once they are happy, the bull bar comes back off for the finishing touches. All right, we're out of here. We're off now to uh, the wrappers. Uh, I think it's uh, Snoop Dogg and um, Biddy Scent. We're gonna do some wrapping. And um, mate, it goes to the wrappers and get that sucker back here. And by then we'll do the final fit up here, All right? Jamie and the boys will do the final fit up and then hopefully off to McCormack's. We got exhaust, we got long range tanks, man, we got some stuff to go on yet. Let's go. Hey guys, I'm here from Campos 4x4 and I want to show you the new Campos 4x4 270 standard. Now it's a 270 degree awning which does a full wrap around but it's light, weight and compact. Check it out. It's got the heavy duty bag that all our awnings have. There's no doubt about that. All right, which makes a big difference when you're trying to protect your awning from the elements. Three little straps hold it together. And mate, watch this, it is that simple. Comes with the A-frame arms, just like all our awnings. Has the lights built in. And the setup is literally seconds. Pull him tight like we always do. Full size LED lights, orange and white, and dimming, okay. And it comes with our awesome colors, orange and gray ripstop canvas. Now, it's a full A-frame arm, so they're aluminum arms and they're powder coated. Each arm comes with a pole, okay, that you can use if you want to or you don't have to, but if you're gonna set it up in the wind, then I suggest you use them. It's a very convenient awning. It's light, it's compact and it's made from Campos 4x4. Now, if you get a chance, go on to Campos 4x4 shop online or check out your local Campos 4x4 dealer. Anyway, back to the adventure. Okay. It was a long drive, mate. Bloody okay, traffic mate. this morning. Good to see you, buddy. Good yeah, I know, I know, I know you were waiting for me. Um, so it's not going to fit in your shed by the looks of that. It's not going to go, mate. It's not going to go. <laughs> it's a it's, sure. right, it's, it's got to go in the big shed, I reckon. We'll have to move some stuff around. Yeah, we'll wheel her in there. But so you got you got the, the, the colour I sent you? Got the blue. What do you think? She makes she's going to look pretty schmick. It's going to look different, it's isn't it? Good. I'll just show you the lines so you know yep. which, which lines you got to do. It. So cool. So all this comes off. Yep. Okay. But yep. you this you gotta this this stays. Yep. All right? So you gotta wrap that. So this all get wrapped yep. up through there. We'll whip the roof rack off. Yep. And we'll do the roof. Yep. Yep. All the sides obviously. Go right through the canopy, right around yep. doors. Yep. You got a good line up through here as well. Yep. But yeah, other than that, I think, mate, go to town on that colour that we picked. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Have cool. you done that colour before? No, mate. No, That's mate. a first. New exciting colour. Well then. Exciting colour. Mate. Awesome, mate. Thank Major. you. That awesome. I'll leave you to it. Thanks, mate. Wow. Wow, look at that. How good is that? Mate, that is that's nuts. <laughs> like I knew it was gonna look good, but this is like next level. Look at the colour in it. Well, there you go, you've got a sneak peek of um, the colour that's gone onto this truck. So obviously last time I left this, this was like a, a sh you know, a gloss blue, that, that real sort of bright blue that I've seen before. And now I've sort of taken that out with this sort of like a, a bluey, purpley satin. It's awesome. I like it. It's, it's really cool. I wonder how, the, wonder how they go on in here. I think Luke could be around here somewhere. Mate, you've done a good job on this. Yeah, mate. Good job, by the way. Good, mate. Make sure no you tell your all. team that they've done an absolute cracking job. Yeah. Look, that just looks mint. Yeah. Don't you think? Yeah. So much better than the old glossy blue that was there before. The colours just pop. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. It was a big, it was a big call. I reckon this is gonna turn some heads, mate. All right, I'll leave well, you to it. I'll get cracking. No worries at all, mate. And, um, yeah, make sure you tell the crew that they've done an awesome job, mate. Too easy. An awesome job. Well done. Loving it. It's even got the logos on it. That's a cracker. <laughs> well done, mate. Well done. Good job. Absolutely awesome. Man, that looks mint. Thank you.
<laughs> wow. Well done. Absolutely well done. Ah, that's just mental. That's five inch, eh? Okay. Yeah. Five, yeah. Yes, no, that's just awesome, mate. <laughs> You've done an absolute magical job. Magical. It's got to go straight over to uh, McCormack's and basically start to finish off all the wiring. Um, it's very, very close to finishing. Um, Jamie here at AMV 4x4, mate, they have done an absolutely exceptional job on the, the double snorkels and this, in this custom bar which is very, very cool. So we'll need a bit of tweaking now on the suspension, which will be fine, because our back armor did say that once you've got the weight on the vehicle, bring it back and then they'll tweak it to suit. But other than that, mate, we are getting so close now. So I'm gonna jump in this truck now, take it over, and um, mate, let's get the finishing pieces done. This beast of a tank is going to go into the Chevy. Now the Chevy, get this, the Chevy runs at about 80, 83 odd litres, okay, standard. This tank here is going to give me an extra 100 litres, so 183 litres in this tank here. Now, this going in won't decrease our underbody height, so it'll maintain all those ground clearance levels that you get from the standard tank, it's just gonna be longer and bigger and tougher. There's no doubt about it. This thing is made out of aluminiumized steel. It's got baffles in it, the swirl pot in it, and it's just built to take a beating. Alrighty, this looks serious. There's no doubt about it. So this is the Manta exhaust for the Chevy. Now, the whole reason why we're changing the exhaust system from stand stock to this aftermarket system is one, so we can get better flow, okay, because we've got a bigger, a bigger exhaust, uh, and also so that we can get a little bit more power, so that, you know, those exhaust gases escape better, and the most important thing of all is we get that note, that V8 LS3 note. So it'll start off, there's the two extractors there. So it comes straight from the engine, the manifold of the engine, bolted straight on, and then from there we head right to the back. Lower down, lower down, lower down. There we go. Yeah, try not to show my this. Look at those puppies. I reckon I could get a shot off on that. Boom! You be right holding it there for an hour. How long? An hour? Don't get them from picking dates. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like knots in cotton. Yeah, is that a I'm holding it. Should have been a plum or a bum <laughs> down that. So the next step is to stick these things on. Now they call these extractors. So obviously um, when you run um, diesels, we don't bother about putting extractors or anything like that on. But when you run a petrol, well, this is unleaded, then a set of extractors will help it flow a lot better. Because as you'll notice, there's one, two, three, four outlets coming out and then merging into one. And that's what helps with the flow, so. getting uh, all the lights together now. Put the lights in here, both sides, and then work out what we're gonna do up on this, this bull bar. Oh yeah, look at that. Laser, that's that little thing in the middle there. LEDs on the outside, and then it's got this, this laser beam in the center. That's for um, shooting down the road. You shoot stuff with it. Not really, but it sounds good. <laughs> Oh yes, look at that. 
fits like a dream. All right, so basically we've got to try and fit these control boxes in here. And I can see a bit of space in behind here. Right there is where we can fit them up. So they'll go in behind there and uh, we can get these winches working. Control boxes are going in. Now it's time to hear the go. new exhaust system. Oh, 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 yeah. That's it. That's what you want to hear, the rumble. Yeah, no, that sounds heaps better. That's awesome. You can really hear that throaty V8 now. That's awesome. Can't wait to get that out on the tracks. Especially when I get it under load. Thank you. Awesome. She sounds good, eh? It does. It rumbles. It's got a bit of rumble going on there. She's burning all the oils off the exhaust. You can see a bit of fuel. Oh, yeah, a bit of smoke engine, coming mate. out, yep. So that'll, look, that'll be all gone in a couple of days, mate. You'll burn it all off. Oh, yeah, I'll be burning it. Don't you worry. I thought you just going... rooster tailing mud with just a yeah. bulk up. Yes, and... yes, yeah, that's it, bulk <laughs> up. <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> So I got hold of a 2023 ZR2, which is a Chevy Silverado. Now this is the latest and greatest truck. Now it's pretty awesome. It's got some cool features just as a standard truck alone, but I've taken it one more step and turned it into Australia's toughest ZR2 Chevy touring truck. So without mucking around, how about we check it out and I'll show you what's gone into this build. Now it's pretty cool. There's some really cool stuff in it some high-tech gear, some normal gear that you would put into a truck, and of course, it's set up for touring this great country of ours. As always, I love building touring trucks. Now, first of all, we started at the front of this truck. Now, as always, when you start at the front of the truck, you gotta work out what sort of bull bar that you're gonna put on it, all right? And being so new, I had to build something custom. So, I spoke to Jamie down there at AMBE, and I said, mate, I need something cool, different, and tough, because it is, it is a tough truck. It's a good size 1500 truck. So, there's the bull bar on the front. Now this one's got a little bit of a twist on it, okay? Now, I don't know whether this is the first that's ever been done, I reckon it might be, but this bull bar here, okay, it looks heavy, but it's not by the way, it's actually made of alloy, it's quite lightweight compared to its, its actual size. But have a look at this, I've gone and put two winches into the bull bar. Have a look at that. So two XTM winches are sitting in this bull bar. And the best part about it is you can actually take the winches out without taking the bull bar off. We've also got some lighting on the front here. Now we've got an XTM uh, laser spotties, okay? And a light bar, you'll see the laser light bar as well. To incorporate more lighting, obviously I've put some light bars, 41 inch. I've gone triple 41 inch light bars on the roof. Um, we've got a heavy duty Uniden aerial. Don't leave home without your uh, UHF, and that's a heavy duty one there. N mounts up there nicely. Now, to lift this whole beast up, Outback Armour have designed a suspension system for it, okay? So it's fully adjustable, heavy duty, all right? And um, it's uh, a roughly about a three, three and a half inch lift, which is basically two inches above the two inch standard. We've got tires and rims as well. We've got a set of nice ROH rims here. Okay, they're pretty cool. Tires, we've got some black bears. Now these are um, 35s, be 12 and a half. Mate, can you believe that? That's pretty much the stock tire size. <laughs> it's a big truck, big, big wheels, mate, big feet. Let's come around this side. If you stand at the front of this truck, the thing you're gonna notice is the twin snorks. To make it more symmetrical, okay? My wife would probably agree with me on that one. She goes, you gotta have it symmetrical. So we've got twin five inch snorkels because this thing's gonna breathe. It is an unleaded car, so it's a, it's a petrol car, but it's still gonna handle water crossings as such because the air intake is obviously above, above the water line. All right, coming down the side, we've got uh, a Rhino roof rack, okay, with color-coded backbone. So this is a Pioneer platform here, and that's where I've mounted some of my um, light bars. I've got some shovel on there. I've got some Max tracks on there as well, using that new Rhino rack mounting system. Got full high-speed satellite internet while I'm mobile on my roof rack, and that's plumbed 
by the way, that is plumbed into the canopy, okay, um, with a Wi-Fi router in there. Let's keep going down the side here. So we've got heavy duty Norweld canopy. This is a tray, okay, so it's got a tray base and then a canopy boulder to it. Okay, so Norweld tray and canopy. Heavy duty, top of the line, got everything that everything that opens and shuts in it. Uh, we've got plumbed water on this side, so gravity fed on that side. We've got pressure pump water on the other side, the kitchen side. Okay, toolboxes on the side here. I won't show you inside the canopy just yet. Let's go around the back here and have a look. You'll notice I've got a rear winch mounted as well. All right, check that out. So a rear winch, another XTM winch. That's triple winched, double snorked, triple winched. Uh, also got this cool Manta exhaust system, which makes this thing sound bloody awesome. I'll tell you what, so stainless steel, 304 grade stainer. So not only does it look good, but it also makes it rumble and you can hear it. A couple of spares on the back, twin spares. Up on the roof here, I've got um, a Campos rooftop tent. There we go. Flash is a rat with a gold tooth in this rooftop tent. Oh yeah, it's still in there. <laughs> this is gonna spin you out. So in my rooftop tent, I decided that if I was gonna have high speed internet, why don't I have um, a smart television? All right, so there you go. Imagine being in the bush and uh, watching your favorite Netflix or Prime Time, Prime Video, or you name it. I, I, it's, I've always wanted to do it, and there it is. We've got a, a full size, okay, 270 Bosch Shadow with RTT access. And there we go. Now, when I mean RTT access, then have a look here. Full access to my rooftop tent, which is pretty cool. All right, rooftop tent access. Let's have a look inside the canopy. All right, here we go. All right, so this is a pretty cool put together canopy from Norwell, and it's a heavy duty canopy with all the fruit inside. We've got the backboard here that houses all the battery management system, the Rogue, the Red Vision system for monitoring, all that sort of stuff. Now, what I've got is I've got two, okay, 400 amp hour lithium red arc batteries, all right, with a Red Vision display on three sides. I've got one, two, and a third one up the front so I can monitor things that are going on, all right? And uh, of course, we've got the Rogue switching system. That's that little little um, panel there that operates all your switching, all right? So we've got a fridge there as well. Uh, we've got some drawer systems like this with a few drawers and bits and pieces. You know, look at that. We've got the map of Australia here, which is um, one of um, Norwell's little signature uh, uh, setups. Now I've got uh, a compressor system on board. Okay, so I've got a full uh, hose reel so I can pump the tires up on this thing. So that's a, um, a 30, I think it's 20, it might be a 20 meter hose reel. So I can pump tires up on the truck and also pump tires up on the trailer. Come around the other side. It's pretty cool as well. So on here we've got the 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter. Now that is that is what's gonna run my uh, Wi-Fi router, which you can see sitting there mounted up underneath. So it's just uh, 240, because I've got plenty of, plenty of power with 400 amp hours of lithium. 2000 watt inverter, that'll run that. Now I've got another screen over here so I can operate things like compressor, lighting. I can turn this on as well. So you can hit the button there, you just turn this on. The other thing you're gonna notice is these, yeah, we've got some big drawers going on here with heaps, you know, heaps of space, but get a load of the sound system in here. This is what we call 1500 watts of bush doof. So check that out. We've got two 500 watt speakers, okay, with lighting, look at all this cool lighting, and I've got a 500 watt sub. So you really wanna get that bass, mate, this thing's gonna start pumping, so, between all that is 1500 watts of bush doof. Now that's from um, Exo Gear. So they've, they've gotten, sent me some stuff and we've bolted it in there like that, which is pretty cool because it even even the light flashes to the uh, the sound of the music.
but have a look in here. So this is where obviously the command station is. <laughs> we'll call it that. Check this out. This is the command station. Now the first thing you'll notice, I've got an iPad mount here. Now the reason why I've got this, okay, is one, so that I can operate all my Google Earth maps, my, uh, my four-wheel drive mapping, all right? And then the other thing, I've got another Red Arc control panel. And so this mirrors all three, so all three are the same. What I switch here, switches there. What I switch there, switches here. So sometimes when you're out and you're looking for the lighting switch, it can be a bit of a pain. You know, you might be up the front of the truck, uh, that side of the truck, this side. You can operate that lighting, okay? from any point in time. Compressor, you might want to switch the compressor off and you're up the front there or you're down the back. Now, for communication, obviously UHF heavy duty aerial, we've got the Uniden, okay, X-Track 80. All right, that's that sucker there. Awesome bit of kit. Remember, it's got full replay function. It's got uh, GPS, so if, if you're running the same the same unit in each vehicle, it'll pick up a GPS mark of where that other transmitter is. So your, your mates down the road, okay? And you use that via the app, okay? So you get hold of the app, you know, you're gonna load up the app on your phone and you can actually see where he is and he can actually see where you are if um, he uh, hooks up as well. So, so yeah, that's a pretty cool feature on the X-Track 80 Pro. All right, so remember it's got Bluetooth. You wouldn't sort of go out into the sticks and get mud and crap all over this truck, you know, unless you had some really good seat covers. So Superfit have come together and they've actually made these denim seat covers for the Chevy. It's just, it's come together really well. Now, I couldn't have done any of this without the big team, okay? There's a massive team behind the whole the whole setup, and especially um, Bodie at McCormack's. His team, him and his team have come together at such short notice to put this truck together. Mate, it's an absolutely awesome rig, and you, even down to the point where we got the guys at Sinorama to fully wrap this truck as well, you'll notice. It's a complete wrap. Um, the existing color underneath, you can see that's the color when I first picked it up. So, Brown Davis have gone and built a super-sized tank for this thing as well. So it's got a, a big, long-range tank, and of course, on this side, which is the um, the opposite side of my kitchen, I've got a, a Rhino Rack Sunseeker. And I've just put a basic awning on this side just to make it, a, you know, just for an easy setup for myself. There we go, pop that one in there. And there we go, there's a little 2.5 Sunseeker on that side. Mate, um, I can't believe how this truck's come together. It's an absolute weapon of a truck, and we're gonna find out how this thing goes because we're gonna take it out into the middle of some of the most remote places in Australia for the next season of All For Adventure. And I can't wait, I cannot wait to see what this thing's like out in the bush.